our next speaker is, um, is, is Pastor John Matuse, and uh, we want to thank God for him. He's a pastor with the Christian Revival Church, CRC, based, based in Senegal, and uh, founder of the Rainbow Bridges Foundation. And uh, I want to thank God for him. I first had the privilege of meeting Pastor John um, during the time of Senegal violence. There was violence in Senegal. And we had gone down there with the Dare to Love team to go and pray with them. And he was one of the leaders, the pastors and the leaders there that was mobilizing prayer and also mobilizing for peace. And... Um, God used him mightily as a vessel to bring peace in Senegal, and now he's working in Phoenix as well to do the same. He's going to be talking to us about rebuilding the walls of our communities. So welcome, Pastor John. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Pearl, and uh, let me greet everyone. Such a privilege and honor for me to be part of this very powerful conversation in our country. I believe that um, <clears throat> this is really a, a relevant time that we should have these conversations. Uh, maybe just a correction there. I think the last time um, I spoke to you, um, we were in the process. Uh, sorry about, um, it's like he wants to join the, the conversation as well. But anyway, um, we are actually part of uh, 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 Beyond Walls Community Church here in Senegal, just a correction there for CRC. And yes, uh, we are really excited for what the Lord is doing in this country. And somebody might ask and say, I mean, what is exciting about what is happening? Uh, because it seems like everything is, is falling apart in our nation you know, in communities and, and with also the recent riots that we have experienced in the country. But I say exciting because um, we know that we are, the Bible says the whole creation is waiting in eagerly expectation for the revelation of the sons of God. And it's like the whole creation is um, as, as the woman in labor. So I believe that our nation is, is in labor uh, for a great revival that is about to break out in our nation. And sometimes, you know, things will get a little bit rough and difficult, but we know that our God is faithful. Um, yes, we, we are also uh, from my side and part of our colleagues involved with Phoenix recently with uh, peace groups there, uh, because we believe that um, we do have a, a voice a voice that we carry from Senegal for what God has done here in a small town of Senegal in the free state. Uh, we have really seen God rebuilding the walls and building bridges um, uh, uh, through people that were genuinely concerned. And we felt that um, it will actually carry value that we, we help our brothers down in the Phoenix so I have been there with a couple, um, couple of us. We went down to Phoenix a few weeks back, and um, we joined with a couple of groups, uh, including the churches, the ministers there. And it was such encouraging to really see how God is using different people uh, within that community, and, and especially the church. Uh, recently saw... Um, the church, uh, we had a meeting with a group of churches there and we were sharing the story of Senegal and how God um, has used the church and the people here in Senegal to build the broken walls of relationships in Senegal. And we were sharing with them how <clears throat> God used the church to intervene. It was almost, uh, uh, almost was uh, a civil war uh, that was also going to affect the whole country. And uh, just a few days after we have shared that story with the pastors, um, uh, the provincial leaders of the uh, uh, EFF, they launched a march, um, uh, which took place eventually, but 
uh, that march was really, um, uh, I mean, the, the, the heading of the march or the theme of the march was rather um, a violent, uh, inciting, and it could really um, change things and bring things back into the conflict again. And, and, and the pastors were able to, to call the organizers of the march and they shared with them their concerns about the peace. And then the EFF changed the heading, which was formerly um, a marching against the racist Indians in Phoenix to solidarity to Phoenix. And I mean, you look at that, <clears throat> you look at that and you, you, you really can see the hand of God. You can see that God is moving and God is using his church uh, to build bridges and to build uh, uh, broken walls. And there's been so many things that the church has been doing since we've been there. In Phoenix, we have seen the, the churches and the ministers going out and reaching out to affected families. Um, bringing food and praying with people and just providing uh, uh, comfort for the people there. Uh, one of the pastors, uh, him uh, together with his church, they even uh, bought a new car for a lady there, um, a, a Zulu lady, a black lady who lost uh, her car during the, the, the riots in Phoenix when she was driving in uh, through Phoenix and people just mistaken her. With, with, with the looters and they burned um, uh, her car. And just to see the church coming through and, and saying, you know, we want to be part of the healing and they bought that car for, for her. And, and, and of course, these are some of the things that, you know, the main um, uh, stream media will not pick it up, but this is what God is doing. I've met a wonderful young man by the name of Tapelo uh, Mohapi, uh, from one of the squatter camps there uh, around Phoenix, uh, who is also a very critical voice of, of peace in that area, you know, building bridges between the Indian community and the Zulu community on that side. And because of his voice and because of his boldness and because of him believing that, you know, you, you cannot just throw a blanket approach over community. You cannot just uh, just because you have a few um, uh, uh, people or criminals and people who maybe had uh, a racial intentions that did wrong, you can't say the whole community is now racist as much as you cannot also say that all the black people are corrupt and are thieves and are looters. And he stood and he said, you know, we cannot have this. We cannot um, have our community people killed and, and attacked. And, and he was attacked himself. His, his shack was banned uh, because he stood and he stood for the he stood for the for the for the right voice. And I mean, these stories like this, many stories that we've picked up while we were there in Phoenix, that are, are are really encouraging to show that there are people with a genuine concern. And as we read in the story of Nehemiah. I mean, Nehemiah <clears throat> had a genuine concern for the broken walls in Jerusalem. And that's actually where it started. And that's where he started to inquire. You know, he wanted to understand and to know what is happening in Jerusalem. And, 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 and these are the people that we need in different communities. I, I really believe that uh, in order for us to build uh, South Africa, we need to build communities. It all starts in the communities. And we need men and women with genuine concern and that will really inquire about um, the, the, the state of their community. And that's what happened here in Sienica. Um, I mean, with what we experienced here in Sienica, immediately there was a genuine concern. And I was one of those people that were really and deeply concerned, starting with the killing of this young man, uh, Brandon Horner. And, and, you know, it was just something that uh, it was so wrong just to see it and, and, and fold our arms just because it wasn't affecting um, uh, a group of your racial group. Um, and, and I really, in my heart, felt that concern that one needs to speak out, one needs to do something about 
uh, the killings that are happening. And of course, I did that. There was a lot of opposition that happened and a lot of different opinions to that. And But yes, I was expecting that because we really living in a very div divided society, divided country. And even here in Senegal, you know, there were people that felt, you know, it didn't concern you, you know, <clears throat> you're not a farmer. Uh, what do you have to do with a young man died? But I believe that as children of God, we are called to be concerned about these issues. We are, we are called to be concerned about the killing of the farmers, the killing of women, the killing of children. We are, we are called to be concerned about the, 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 the falling of, of, of you know, the, <clears throat> the destruction that we see even in our, in our local government, you know, the, the government falling apart and, our political system falling apart, the corruption in the country, that is something that should concern us. And I think that's where actually God starts. That's where God, if God wants to move into a community, wants to bring change into a country, he's looking for their hearts. Those people that has got a heart that says, God, we are concerned. We are, we are, we are in pain for what is happening in our country. And that's what happened with Nehemiah. Once he was concerned and he went to pray to the Lord, <clears throat> and as he was praying, God gave him strategy. You know, God gave him where to start. And he sought for the blessing of the king. And the king gave his favor because you see he had the right heart. And I believe that as we move with the right heart and the right spirit, then God begins, God will begin to give us favor. Even in this in this time that we are in in our country where things are falling apart, I believe that we are going to start to see the sons of the kingdom and the daughters of the kingdom of God beginning to emerge, emerge with an incredible favor upon their lives that people will say, yes, please lead us, show us the way. How can we rebuild? How can we build bridges between communities and, and be, be between races and ethnic groups. And, and, and I believe this is very, very important um, uh, that we need to be in the lookout as the children of God. So we have started here in Senegal. And if I look at the, the model of Nehemiah, uh, I mean, it, it just happened without us even thinking about it uh, here in Senegal, just to see how God led Nehemiah to build, and, and also how God led us to build here in Senegal. Immediately, um, we, we started a forum here in Senegal where we brought everyone. Uh, we brought everyone from every background and from every organization here in Senegal, even political, political uh, uh, leaders here in Senegal, the EFF. Uh, one of the very strong EFF guys, part of the forum here, here in Senegal. And by the way, uh, when we started the negotiations, um, uh, they, they, they had planned a march, as they did in Phoenix. They have planned a march to march against uh, the farmers here who, who were protesting against the killing of the, of the young men. And... And we had that meeting prior to their march that was supposed to take place on Friday. And as a result of that meeting that we had, they called off the march because they said, we want to be part of the process of bringing peace and healing in Senegal. And just to highlight the favor that when we start uh, with genuine heart, we are becoming concerned of what is happening in the city. God gives that favor. And now that man is part of um, this, this, this leader of EFF is now part of the forum and is also responsible for some of the projects that the forum is doing um, uh, here in Senegal. And, and, and it's just an amazing to see how people have come together to say, you know, we want to rebuild. We want to build differently. And, and, and this was for us a great opportunity uh, in Senegal to say, you know, how do you, how do you move from what has just happened? 
How do you build from what has just happened? And we really saw it as an opportunity to say, you know, um, a lot of people now know Sienegal. Um, even uh, CNN, Sienegal was on a CNN news. You know, everyone was talking about Sienegal, what is happening in Sienegal. We said this provides an incredible opportunity for us uh, to build something different and to change the narrative that from a Senegal, um, a, a racial um, a battlefield, from Senegal, a miracle town, a town that is becoming a model for other communities to follow of how communities can come together and build their town. And today we are so proud to see the achievements that uh, we have been able to achieve as the people, as the community in Senegal. We, we were running for the town, for the best town of the year and, uh, and uh, on, on Quella program. Unfortunately, we couldn't uh, win that one, but hopefully next time we will actually uh, win something. Um, but we, 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 we are so excited to see what is happening. And, but I think for me, uh, in closing, what has also been very uh, incredibly amazing is to see the relationships, the, the bridges that have been built between communities. Because I remember very well when we started here in Senegal, um, uh, some of the people from the Human Rights Commission, um, they said, you know, they approached us and they said, let us have dialogue, you know, let's talk about racism, let's talk about uh, uh, what happened, what caused the, the, the tension in Senegal. And we really felt strongly that it wasn't going to help for us to come and sit in a room and talk about racism and talk about that and that, because it's not everyone in Senegal who's got a problem with racism. And, and, and we really believe then that uh, what happened in Senegal, it wasn't a racial thing. It wasn't motivated by, uh, by racism. It was, it, was, it, was about, it was about crime. It was about a young man who was slaughtered. It was about people who were angry and people who were heartful, as we use that word now in South Africa of the killings that is happening. And, and, and in fact, everyone was supposed to be, to, be, to be heartful. So it was actually amazing that there were people who were not heartful. But anyway, um, and, and, and what we had said to them is, um, we really believe that in order for us to mend the relationships and the walls, the broken walls of, 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 of relationship between the communities, you really need to have uh, what are called unity uh, uh, projects. Um, just identify projects within the community that can bring people together. Projects that affect both parts of the community. Uh, projects that um, you know people are all complaining about. I mean, in Sienegal, uh, the biggest thing was potholes. The potholes were biggest problem that affected everyone, black and white. Um, I mean, there was, uh, there's a poor service delivery in Senegal, you know, things were falling apart. And, and, and those were the things that we said, let's find a way to come together around and to solve this problem. And as we came together as a community around those projects, uh, you know, naturally relationships have been forged. Uh, naturally, uh, people are, you know, the hearts are beginning to open. And I remember it was such, um, it was such an experience to see young um, uh, white fellows, you know, going into the township and, and, and joining with uh, 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 the people in the community in Matwabe, you know, to clean up the dumping site, to clean up the mess that they didn't even create it but just having a heart to say, we want to be part of the solution. And out wow. of that, there are so many, so many relationships that were built uh, that would have not been, uh, would have not existed uh, before. But yes, I, I just want to say, um, I think it is very important 
that we we need to we need to be bold we need to stand up especially in this time in our communities and we we need to be men and women of peace and and let's see what god can do and uh, let's rebuild let's build bridges between communities and yes uh, that is the message that i have for us thank you so much for the for the opportunity thank you so much pastor john what a wonderful testimony of uh, reconciliation in an almost volatile situation and also most importantly how God was using the church and the body of Christ to actually lead the peace initiatives and the reconciliation. Matthew 5, 9 says, you know, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of God. 